as long as you want, Dave. <laughs> My name's Danny. I'm an alcoholic. And wow, I uh, I sure love Alcoholics Anonymous. And uh, a blonde. Uh, God, no wonder I can't keep a relationship going. You know, really... uh, uh, yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when they tell you that you're on a journey, they really mm. meet it, you know, and, uh, I finally realized that I could be a fortune teller. You know, I could, if, if, if people from, especially newcomers, if newcomers came to me and said, you know what, Danny, uh, I want to drink, you know, I, I still want to go drink. Could you tell me what was going to happen? I could be wearing one of those like hats with the little moons. I'm one of them, the moons, one of them hats, you know, with the moons and stuff. I know. Hamya, Hamya, you're gonna go to jail. You can't. Hamya, you're gonna lose your family. Uh, your wife and her husband go throw you out of the house, and and go right down the line. And what would what be amazing is when that stuff started happening, because it will. Those told new go. God, I should have listened to that guy. I really knew what he was talking. About. It's a fortune teller, you know? And it, uh, folks, it's like not that difficult. Do you understand? I thank God. That, you know, because I first, the first time, I hate to say it, but the first time I was ever in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting was 1959, you know? And, uh, and you know, I thought it was a party, you know? I was like, there's about 20 of us cruising around in Pacoima. <laughs> A whole carload, you know, and, uh, and we seen about like, you know, 30 cars parked out in front of this old house right on the corner of Van Nuys Boulevard and Lev Street. And uh, it's not there no more. The five freeway now, you know, took it just before the five freeway. You know? And uh, and we seen like, Wakoima was like our neighborhood. This is like the murder capital of the world. And. They're having an event and they're not inviting the murderers. It was like crazy. You know? And we like, brrr, brrr, stop the car. We go to the trunk of the car to get the tools necessary to crash events. And, and we got tire irons, piece of pipe. I had a case of beer, three bottles of wine, a half pint of whiskey. And I was already loaded on Red Devils. Oh, God, I hated those things. Man. <laughs> Every time I say Red Devils, I think I'm going to get kicked by somebody. <laughs> and loaded on pills. And uh, and uh, and we went to the door. Because you got to, you know, like, kick in the... You can't, like, knock if you're trashing an event. Because they just locked the door and called the cops, you know. Kicked in the front door and everybody rushed in. And there's only two greetings you can get when you crash an event. Either everybody rushes to the opposite side of the room... And that means they're willing to throw the event in your honor. Uh -huh. Or they rush to the side of the room that you're on. That's what them jacks and them tire irons and pieces of pipe before. We kick in the door. The first thing we saw was a big sign that said, we care. Uh -huh. We had just crashed the Friday night speakers meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous, the we care group. And uh, we got the stupidest greeting in the world. We had all these people rushing us going, I, I'm Bob. <laughs> uh, and I had trained my troops. When you crash an event, you just never split up. You, know, you just stay in a group at first till they realize that this is yours. This event is yours. And, <laughs> and you guys did that divide and conquer thing because I, I turned around to get my guys out. And you had them all in like little groups of four, all. Of them. <laughs> this guy comes up and says, and introduces himself, and yeah, 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 yeah. Let me out here. See, but I already, I, I picked up on you guys real quick. You know, I mean, real quick. I, I was pretty sharp. You know, 
I see the baskets. Yeah. The baskets mean church. Church mm -hmm. means anything that's fun is a sin. Okay. And then if you think of something, that's if you do it. If you think of something that's fun, it's a venial sin. If you do it, it's like a mortal sin. Either way, you're going to burn somewhere for eternity, you know. So I like, I turned away from church real quick, you know. And I'm trying to get out of here now. And I got this case of beer, there's three bottles of wine, half pint of whiskey. And I'm already stumbling on them red devils. And this guy comes up, introduces himself and says, you know, Danny, why don't you put that stuff outside and join us? This is 1959 they're asking me to come into this place, you know. Come on, old man. I got penitentiaries to go to. What the hell's wrong with you? He whispered the curse of Alcoholics Anonymous. At early age, I heard it, you see. He said, Danny, if you leave this program, you will die, go insane, or go to jail. Now, did you hear that little whoop, that little dip in the quiet? The quiet. That was the voodoo of Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> you all heard it. See? You should have did what I should have did. When he whispered that curse, I should have went, I can't hear you. I didn't do it, and neither did you. See? And I know some of you think this guy's nuts. Let me tell you why that curse makes a lot of sense. Because for anybody that leaves, now you might forget everybody in this room, but you will not forget me. Because I got to whisper the curse. See? And that curse makes like a lot of sense when you're like driving and you know you're drunk or loaded. You know it. You know, you're like, oh, you know, that's a good sign. And all of a sudden, bam, those lights go on and, you know, and it makes your whole car orange. And, but, but watch those lights. Those lights go, die, go, sing, go to jail, die, go, sing, go to jail, die, go, sing, go to jail, die, go. Sing, go to jail, die, go. Yeah. When you get home and your spouse, male, I know, has everything you own on the front yard and they're gone and the neighbor's telling you they left and they said just get your stuff and get out of here that's what the neighbor says what you hear is die go insane or go to jail it's like okay yeah and he's like from now on the alternatives you have for staying in this program is dying going insane and going to jail and i've been sober 37 years and and that has been proven to me over and over again by people. Nobody in 37 years had, has ever left this program and called me with some good news. Honest to God, I'm not God, I'm just word of God. Nobody has ever said, you know what, Danny, I'm going to go get loaded. I'm going to go drink. I'm tired of this. And gone out, called me like two years later and said, hey, Dad. You know what? No, I'm drinking. I'm drinking. I'm drinking socially. Yeah, I use a little. Yeah, not you know, so, you know, just recreational. But my wife loves me. My kids adore me. I have a good job. My boss can't wait till I show up. Nobody has ever called me and said that. Nobody's ever called me and said I'm having a good time. I get calls from people that leave, and the usually it's weird because the phone will ring. You'll hear somebody go. And there's usually kids screaming in the back, you know, and you hear a spouse, male, female, I don't know, whatever, is a woman calling me or a man, but you hear the spouse, yeah, pick him up. We don't want him here anymore. We're sick of him. I'm calling the guy. And oh, it's not working out. Oh, <laughs> oh our hats are not going to be off to you. Huh? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I actually had a friend of mine, a girl, that used to go out and just, God, Dan, I want so bad for your hat to be off to me. It says that in the book about if you can drink like a normal person, our hats are off to you. 
And it's, it's not going to happen. Do you understand? We are afflicted with an incurable yeah. disease. And until we lock into that, do you understand? Until we lock into that and realize, wait a minute, I have no power over this. This is an illness. This isn't a decision. I think I'll drink. It's not. See, that started three weeks ago. Do you understand? What I love, it's like they say, resentments. Resentments are like me taking poison, hoping you die. They are. I swear to God. Resentments make me sick. You, and if you really want to, when you're resenting somebody, like resent them. And then watch them. Like the first week you resent them, they'll come in and they'll get to the podium and they'll say, I just got the most wonderfulest job I've ever had in life. God's really beautiful. Because they got the wonderful job. And then, no, but don't stop. Keep resenting them. A week later. I don't know what my... I bought a house. I house? I'm so blessed. Uh, no, really. Then they come in walking with the most gorgeous thing you ever see. I'm in a relationship. They got that stupid look like you. Oh, I... And life is just, you know, it happens every time. Every time I resent somebody, good stuff happens to them. <laughs> so I stop resenting people. <laughs> I don't want to take poison, see? I don't want to take poison. Yeah. Life has been so good to me, see? Come into Alcoholics Anonymous. Oh, I and don't think I, I got, like, you know, because, you know, I, I've been known to, Slip. I love that slip. Here. I love the way people talk. I had a slip. I had a slip on Friday. <laughs> Thank God I made it back for the Saturday morning meeting. <laughs> Makes me mad. A waste. <laughs> I had a slip in 59, got out in 63. Mm. Had another little slip in 63, mm. got out in 65. Had another little whoop slip in 65, got out in 69. He all more slips. <laughs> You see? Yes, you know, because you got to remember, the first thing, the first time we take that first fix, pill, drink, or smoke any of that non-habit-forming gangster grass, we can no longer guarantee our actions. No longer. It's done. See? And it doesn't start, right? It's not a decision. See that guy? I, I could not stand. I couldn't stand that guy coming in with that gorgeous blonde. I had my eyes on her. You and that's the one that did it. After all these, like, it's a process. It's a process. See, don't tell me, man. It's like, life is beautiful. Life is so beautiful. There's a liquor store. I think I'll have a drink. It doesn't happen like that. Do you understand? It's like slow, cunning, athlete, powerful, sneaks up, waiting patiently. <laughs> I'm going to get this uh, girl. Get this. Wait, see. And uh, hey, look at me. Look. I mean, I shot heroin. I drank wine. Drank wine. Drank wine. Oh, that's so pills. I'm out working in my backyard. And what do I hear in my head? But why, sir? <laughs> La cerveza must be now. Are you kidding? I know. I know. One beer always gives me a headache. It has since I was... Twelve. Yeah. It's always giving me a headache. One beer. And how do you get rid of the headache? Have another beer. And then two beers, it's just kind of like, you're just not there. It's just, okay, I had two. You know there's four left in the six-pack. Three, just kind of like, hey, three old beers. I was like, cool, man. <laughs> cool, three's cool. No, it's all right. There's three left. I can never you never. My grandmother passed away thinking I was only drinking two beers because men, especially Mexicans, 
are supposed to drink. I mean, it's that simple. I'm sorry. It's just cultural or something. I don't know. Shit. Yeah. And I'm clean and sober and I'm going to meetings and I'm fresh out of the penitentiary. And my grandmother would say, the mas los, mijo, the mas los. And just, I no, grandma, I'm not drinking. I'm not, 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 not no, 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 the mas los. Because she knows if I say I'm not drinking, I'm lying. And so I'm sober like 20 years when she passed away. And, and before she pitched him, I finally, okay, just do it. <laughs> and I, mm-hmm. So I just said, okay, <laughs> it's cool. See? See? Because to her too was none. See? And, it, and it's so it's like, you know, this thing that we have, this disease that we have, you understand? This disease that we have, it's the cunning, baffling, and powerful. It says it, it's an obsession of, like, it's, a, it's an, obs- wait, wait, hold on. It's an it's, it's a allergy of the body coupled with an obsession of the mind. That means our bodies are allergic to it. Our minds are obsessed with it. Do you understand? Obsessed with it. Now the mind, ooh, this mind is good. This disease has that mind soda. This disease wakes up 45 minutes before you do. Do you understand? 45 minutes, this disease is awake. You're still sound asleep. You don't even know this. This is the shit you learn after you're 35 years sober. You're sound asleep. The disease is wide awake. See? And it starts. Huh. You piece of crap. You. you can't keep a relationship. Look at you. And don't think I forgot what you did when you were five. Yeah, I remember you, piece of crap. So when you open up, when you wake up, you're like, oh, God, I'm a piece of crap. See? And unless I get on my knees, that's what they say the first thing in the morning. That's the only thing that'll get that monster to sleep. Dear God, uh, please uh, get it out of my head. Cool, see? And it's not going to tell us. Go drink. It's not. It's the goal you use. It's not. It's going to just you, piece of crap. You walk around, you go, oh, I'm a piece of crap. I'm a piece of crap. I'm no good, and I did bad things. And so you stay there long enough, stay angry long enough, you know, and all of a sudden, opportunity, some kind of way, that's when you see a liquor store. That's when you hear, ah, but why, sir? (laughs) And somebody shows up with a bud, see? So it's like a process. And people keep thinking that the decision is not hard. See, so I got to make sure that, wait a minute, okay, now what am I doing, man? Am I talking to newcomers? Yeah. I love it. I love it when one of my sponsees call. Man, you want to see you And then she went, wait a minute. How many newcomers did you talk to today? Oh, well, you hate us. I got a lot of stuff going on. Well, shut up. Call me back after you talk to a newcomer. You see what I'm saying? See, because once I start talking, to a newcomer, once I start working okay. with another alcoholic, the disease has to shut up. Has to shut up. But he's just sitting there and he's waiting. You see, just sitting there. Okay. So as long as I keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, saying my prayers, working my little steps, oh, I screw the tradition. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I just love saying it. You know, working the traditions, uh, 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 you know, working with newcomers, being of service, doing that stuff. It's like all of us, the disease is asleep. I'm telling you, man. Every area of your life can be shot. I need a job. God, relationship. Oh, man. Financial instability. Uh, man, I've talked to this guy on Kid Roll. He, he don't even got shoes. I remember I was talking. I was in a meeting, and I was sitting in the back. And there was this guy talking, and he was talking about you know, and this program has been good to me, but I got a, I got a bed, and I really want somebody to share it with. He was really whining about not having a relationship. And, and these two homeless guys that were sitting in the back right in front of me, he, you know what I'm saying? And, and it was funny. The other guy says, he wants to share. You know? and, and I started like, this guy thought I was laughing at him, you know, because... Because, you know, because when you're homeless, you, you don't think nothing about crawling out. It's cold. Yeah. Oh, can we spoon? Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> you and, and, uh, and I could I, I how it is no matter what no matter what I'm going through man all I got to do is walk into a room of alcohol so all I got to do is call up a newcomer and it's like and all of a sudden wait a minute man I'm sober I've got a job place to live <laughs> oh I got keys and keys are very, very dear to me. You know, I don't know, because, you know, when, when you do about 11 years of the penitentiary, you miss keys. You, you just miss keys. And you just, you know, just, just keys. So as, as long as I can put my hand in my pocket and, like, feel keys, I must be all right. <laughs> I mean, it's the very... Simple things. And they told me, keep it simple. I thank God that my first sponsor, a guy named Frank Russo, Frank Russo, Frank Russo. And I say that because he told me never to mention his name. Uh, he, you know, he sponsored me for a little while. Now, me and this guy went to prison together. It was, you know, we were like buddies and we were pals on the streets. And then he got out and, and he got like famous in AA, you know. God, I thought he was going to be the president or something. Too. And And this guy used to look at me and say, Danny, listen, listen, because he knew me. Do you understand? He said, don't worry about powerless. Don't worry about unmanageability. Just wake up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror and say, brain broke. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's all. Just realize that. Yeah. I still do. Brain broke. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh. I, I love, there's a lot of people in, 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 in Alcoholics that Anonymous. Well, you're not, you're not willing to accept responsibility. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I'm not. I am the most irresponsible person on the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I take great pride in that. I don't write anything down. Nothing. Nothing. Somebody calls me to speak. I say, okay, but you better call me five times because otherwise I'm not going to make it. Well, do you have a calendar? No. Well, uh, okay. That's, 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 call me about 12 times. Call me today. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I got I got to kill you. Oh, I'm going up. My daughter drove up. You know, my daughter, she's going to have 60 days. She drove me up. You know. And, yeah, just like, great ride up, PCA. So now watch out. She drives better than I do. Cause, cause I'm not, I'm not like a, a good driver. I know men feel, yeah, I'm a great driver. I'm not. I like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna kill you. No. All right, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. Hey, I'm gonna kill you. Okay, I gotta. I, you know, you know, God put me in a position to where my job, if they want me, they send a car. You know, they, you know, uh, you have a 6 a.m. call. Oh, okay. And I've, I've gone to work in pajamas. Because they're going to dress me when I get there anyway. Uh, you know what? I honestly, and I used to, I think I used to be responsible. I did it. I didn't mean it. I remember my, this other, this, my second sponsor, a guy named Sam Hardy. Sam, because when I first got here, I was having a lot of trouble in Alcoholics Anonymous. I wasn't doing good. Fresh out of the penitentiary. I just finished doing five years. I thought I was violent. I, I you know, I, you know, I thought I was angry. But Sam used to have this thing when I would be talking and I would say, Darren, yeah, I'm very violent. He would stand up and go, scary cat, and then sit back down. You're not really angry. Scary cat. You know what? See? See? And he's scared. Well, then why are, you, why are you carrying a pistol? Uh, in case somebody attacks me. 
and said, besides that being a parole violation, why you carry a knife? It's certainly not to like protect myself from bears. You know what I mean? I mean, so, so, so I started showing up at meetings with no weapons. Just, Hi, I'm Bill. People, it's so funny. Hi, I'm Bob. Yeah, well, Bob up and down on this and get away from me. I, I, I wasn't like friendly. Do you understand? I wasn't friendly. I wasn't a nice guy. I, you know, you don't come out of prison being a pleasant person, you know? And, and I, I was really angry. These guys used to just always haul on my heart. There's this one guy, a guy named Hank Magdaleno, who passed away. And, 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 and I love, I learned to love this man. And this guy would have, he was one of those guys that would not let you not say hi. You know what I mean? He was, I, I first met him and I, I didn't like him. So I didn't like him. And, 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 um, my sponsor, Frank, he just, hey, Hank, Hank, yeah, well, Hank on this, get away from me, man. And, uh, he's okay, hey, you keep coming back, because we need you. And I'd go to another meeting and I'd walk in and Hank, hey, Danny, what's up? There, yes. I don't know this guy, you know what I mean? He wants to be my buddy. I'd go to another meeting, I'd sneak in and, and I'd hear this. Psst, psst, not look at I, I swear to God, I mean, it's like weird. I go to another meeting. Hey, Dan, it's me. Hey, how you doing? Come here, my, my brother. Come yeah. here. Yeah. Why don't you screw off, Holmes? Leave me alone. You know? Everywhere I'd go. The, the first time I walked into a meeting and, and I saw Hank and he didn't see me automatically. I'm like, Hank, did I say hi? Yeah. No, he tricked me. I got so used to hearing him say hi that, you know, first time. Yeah, and and, and, uh, and me and became, me and him, he became really, really dear to me, man. I mean, really dear. And um, it's having a lot of trouble you know, in, in these meetings, man. I, I didn't like people. I didn't like hugs. I didn't get everyone getting near me. You know, you, don't, you, you can't be a touchy feely person in prison. You know, and you get mad, yeah. <laughs> and AA people are touchy feely. You know, they're like, hey, how I been? Yeah. yeah. And I tell Sam, Sam, you know what, man? I'm serious. Man, these people, they disrespect me. How they disrespect you? They look at me too long. Bug me. And he says, I'm being Sam was always had that shit on him. Well, then they, one of the reasons you have a lot of trouble is you're not a nice person. And your problem then is double because you're not only a, not a nice person, you don't even look like a nice person. Could you sugarcoat that a little bit, someone? What you got to do is you got to start doing things for other people and not expect any kind of rewired. And he said it like that, like a hill rewired. Yeah. I could have forgot it if he said reward. Yeah. But how in the hell are you going to forget rewired? Yeah. And, and doing nice things for people sometimes when you look like me, tough. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I can remember I was in Reseda Park, and this lady, she had two dogs. She had a doby and a boxer, and the boxer got away. And the, she was right, it was right here. And the leash was right there. And I'm standing there with no shirt, with no shirt. And I'm saying, uh, you want me to get your dog? Oh, shit. You know how that lady did it, but she picked up that boxer, ran by me, grabbed the doby, and ran, jumped in her car. And I went to Sam. I said, Sam, yeah, try to try to I'm gonna get her dog. And I knew he was gonna say, Well, then it. You know, there's some women that do not like men's help. You know, I thought he was, he looked at me. 
Well, look at you. You look like a damn maniac. I wouldn't want you touching my dog either. Y'all cover with them cartoons, him. Now, you're going to have to start doing things for other people and not even let them know. And to me, that sounds like stupid. Yeah, I'm sorry. That means there ain't no chance of getting a tip out of that sucker. You know what I mean? They're going to be running around. Well, who did that? Who did that? You know what I mean? And I'm standing out in front of my mom's in Pacoima. And like, you know, I'm standing there like an idiot now. And you got to remember, my first three years, I used to stand out in my front yard with those, with a double jigger, you know, the two shot glass, and I'd have one ice cube in it and Coke soda, just so any of the guys that I knew, if they passed by, they they just think I was drinking soda, and uh, and I see this old lady trying to pull out this trash can, this big old trash can. And this is in the 70s, you know, this is not when they had the big roly, greeny, blue, and, and black, you know, they're big old trash. So I went over there to help her, you know, just to put, and the first time I ever, no matter all about the rice, yeah, throw this trash all over here. And I put out her trash can. And then I, I remember there's about five or six old people. God, I hate to say that because they were 60 and I'm saying. But <laughs> they were 140, and uh, so <laughs> they were like like 60, and 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 uh, and I went. And I just started putting out the even the the bruja. I, I what is it? The witch. We had a witch lady in our neighborhood. She could never come out because witches can't come out during the day. But but I'd always see her at the window. You know, I always see her at the window. You know, and I'd put out her trash and uh. And, you know, that's what I did. That's all I did. I just went around. It was like, I just had a route, I guess. I don't know, about five people. And the first sport coat I ever got was, my mom says, Mijo, you know that old man down the street, the old he know, that's crippled? He brought you a beautiful suede, like, like blazer, you know, gorgeous tan. Because the only thing, I never had a sport coat in my life. Other than like a joint dress out, you know, like a, like when you get out, they always give you like a, please don't rain on me suit and shit. And, and, and they, I would get these little gifts and, and even that witch lady, she'd like always put like, like lemonade and, 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 and cookies and stuff. You know, my friends are, don't eat up, you'll be in chat. Shut up. You mean, take a bite. <laughs> I, I didn't believe it, but I'd always let, make them take a bite first, you know, and uh, everything good that has ever happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. Everything. That's a God's honest truth. Me and a guy that some of you know, a guy named Danny Levitar, we started a gardening business. And uh, we used to like go and, yeah, it was funny. We didn't even have a lawn mower. We just got to go knock on people's door and say, hey, do you want us to mow your lawn? Well, I'll do this, do this, do this, you know, for 20 bucks or 10 bucks. I don't even, yeah. Uh, okay, do you have a lawn mower? <laughs> They go, yeah. And if they had a lawnmower, then we go like next door. You want to mow your lawn? We got a lawnmower. Yeah. Okay. And we had we started we mowed lawns. We did, did a good lift. And we would always go. There was a couple of old people that would always just go and mow their lawn. And like the witch lady was one of them. We'd mow her lawn and uh, just you know for free because that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, And one day this guy comes up. I'll never forget this big old dude. This guy, you know, one of them, one of, oh God, one of those old guys that used to be tough a long time ago. Then about 60. Creek <laughs> hot. <laughs> this guy comes over and the first word out of his mouth are, hey, Pancho. Oh. That's 10 bucks right there, or whatever he wants. How much you charging this old lady? I said, ah, we're doing it for free, man. She's an old lady. It's crazy, and she's a witch. You can't come up. And... Well, come on over. I want you to. I want you to do my yard. So we go over to this guy's yard. 
And it's funny because he said, and bring, bring Pablo there with you. And Danny Levitoff, Levitoff, okay? The furthest thing from Pablo. And we go over to this guy's yard. And I already got it for 20 bucks for the Pancho and the Pablo. You know, it's like, it's like pay out his ass. And he starts, I want you to do this. And yeah, cut these on these things. And my dog, he's break a sprinkler. You fix it, man. And then we go to his garage. And, and he says, oh, opens up the garage. And this guy got like, Two lawnmowers, like an edger, like a real edger, not one of them damn little wheels. I, I, I don't know if any, do they still have those? You know, so like a little star wheel. <laughs> you hit a rock and you almost go, he had, he had like one like, and, and wheelbarrows and shovels. And he's lying out. I want you to uh, do my yard. You can do it for free and have that stuff. Do you want me to come over and like wash your bag too? <laughs> and he says, uh, what is your name? Like, Pancho's cool. It's all right. Uh, how about you have Pablo? It's all right. Yeah. And we had a, actually had a gardening business. I mean, we had such a many tools. We, we actually bought a truck because I had a 65 Mustang. And that's what we were running around in. And we get all the bags and we put them in the trunk and take them to like Vons. You know, and she, Safeway, all the all the places I used to rob. I know. Okay. And it was like, like we 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 had so much equipment. We bought a truck. We bought a truck and a van, and we actually had like a like a real business. We even got shirts with a little guy, <laughs> yeah, green, and uh, and uh. And we were doing pretty good. And everything good that has ever happened to me has happened as a direct result of helping someone else. In 1985, I spoke at a Cocaine's Anonymous meeting. And um, I didn't like it. You got to remember, in 1985, Cocaine's Anonymous was just kind of like getting started. That's when all the like therapists and stuff were like still coming. You know, the, the, oh, oh, we might do a little rehab here. You know, the, those guys. He, oh, I see Betty Ford in my future. You know, those guys. You know, right, man. Well, yeah, well, they hadn't started rocking that shit up yet, you know, so. I walk into this meeting and it was, it, God, it was like unbelievable. I mean, it was like this. Hurry, people, you know, I'm going to see some sucked up human with those guys. Man, they all look like doctors. You know? And it looked like a gold come. Everybody had gold, you know. I mean, just everybody stole this gold. And got it. Shut up! Give me your money. I mean, I no, I'd have left it all outside. But I just, you know, just got that obsession, you know. And uh, I wouldn't have stole it. And after the meeting, this kid comes up to me, man. This kid's about eighteen years old, and he comes up and says, "Boy, I really identified with you, Danny." And I'm talking about Folsom, San Quentin, Soledad, every prison. And I, and I look at him. This kid didn't have like a feather on him, you know, and, uh, he couldn't have been from a neighborhood near my neighborhood. And if he'd have been in any jail with me, uh, we'd have changed his name. I mean, from now on, your name is Katrina. You know? <laughs> it's like, but he identified with me, you know, and, and can I hear for, and I remember talking about the bottom, he was like, I really hit him. Yeah. And he's got a, one of those Rolex Imperial, the good one, you know, the one that goes like that, you know, not that, not that, not that one, you know, the one that's just, you know, the real one, it's about $3,000 on his head, damn, <laughs> and you, cause, you know, because my mind, it's that, that one, three quarters of it, it's like, just thinks, I take this kid outside and take that watch, I'll show you the body. <laughs> I gave him my phone number, and I, this kid, I got eight days, and my dad gave me my car back, I, and I, I'm living at the house now. I'm doing good. A yeah. hundred days later at 11 o'clock at night, this kid calls me. And, and, I, and it, see, it, it fooled me because the call started out with that. I feel like getting loaded. I feel like since 1969, nobody has ever called me and said, they feel like getting loaded. 
I get those calls. And... Homes. I got loaded. Or, or I get them calls at like quarter or two in the morning. And a snail. I couldn't believe it. Somebody actually called from 1969. This was 1985. Somebody says, I feel like getting loaded. I you mean, you're not. <laughs> no. But there's a there's a lot of blow. There's a lot of there's a lot going on in my job, and I James Johnny Carson was gonna be come on, and that lady with the bugs was gonna be on, you know? and uh, and I said, well, come on over. He said, I can't, Danny. I'm working, and and uh, can you come down? And he said it, you know, with that desperation, the one, the desperation that we all know when we really said, you know, please, man. You know, not that you know, we weren't the, the fingers crossed, nothing. It was like when you were just, you know, I see it, I'm done, man. And he said, please, can you come down? And I want so bad to say, I said, certainly. You know, I'm thinking who to call, you know, because I sponsor a lot of people. I'll send one of them, they have to, you know. He, man. man. But then I remember all the people that did for me, you know. So, I know where you at. And I got the address. He was downtown, working downtown by Olvera Street. He said in a big warehouse. So I, oh, cool. So I thought, you know, the typical, you're going to sit there till break, and then he's going to come out, and you're going to sit in the car and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. Then breaks over. He goes back. Everybody thinks you're gay. And uh, it wasn't. I walked on to a movie set of a movie called Runaway Train. John Voight and Eric, I don't know these guys. I walked. I'm like, wow, this is like so cool. It's like, it was like fun. I'm watching all these guys. They were all dressed like convicts. There were all these guys from Brentwood and Westwood and Bel Air. They're all like dressed in the prison blues and fake tattoos. And I kept going, oh, I'm sorry. His spirit. <laughs> and they all kept coming over to me saying, hey, do I look hard? I'd go, yeah, you'd be somebody's wife in prison. Oh, I'm hearing. That's what you This guy comes up and says, do you want to be in this movie? What do I got to do? Do you want to be an extra? I said, extra what? I, I don't know. I've never been on a movie set in my life. He says, can you act like a convict? So I'm like a joke. I swear to God, I was expecting some... TV host guys like, hey, we got you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I looked at I'll give it a shot. You know, and they, they give me the blue state pants. I, and I'm not bragging. I'm sorry, but those blue state pants just look good on me. They just, they do. Doesn't matter what size, they just look good. They just, the way they're cut just seems to drop just perfect, you know? And then he gives me that shirt. So I take off my shirt. When I took off my shirt, he sees a big old tattoo. This guy goes. I'm looking at him saying, now what stupid neighborhood is that? Yeah. This punk better not be signing me. I'll slap the shit out of it. It's like you splashing me a sign. This other guy comes over and says, hey, you're Danny Trejo. I said, yeah. He says, Danny, I saw you in the lightweight and the welterweight title up in San Quentin. I says, you're Eddie Bunker. He says, yeah. I said, man, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. And he says, what are you doing here, Danny? I said, I'm hanging out with this kid. And he wants to stay clean. And, he's, and they're going to, he says, she said, do you want a job? I said, I got one. They're going to give me 50 bucks for acting like a convict. He said, no, 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 a real job. We got we want to, can you train one of the actors how to box? I said, what's it pay? Yeah, I'm, he says, three twenty a day. I says, how bad do you want this guy beat up, Holmes? I said, no, uh, no, no. No, I figured, uh, you come on, 320 bucks. I, I figured I'd beat him up. I'd write about it and I'd go tell Sam I was expecting a reward. Dude. Dude. 
I said, no, 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 Danny, you got to be careful. This actor is really high strung. He might suck. He's already sucked a couple. For $320, give him a stack, man. Are you crazy? Shit. I've been beat up for free, man. I started training an actor named Eric Roberts how to box. And Eric kind of liked me and we got along good. And the director saw that. And all of a sudden, this director comes up and says, you be in movie. And uh, what's that? Shh. Shut up. I always... And they were signing some stuff. And, and they were mad because I wasn't sag. And the director said, you make him sag. And walked away. He's a Russian, a Russian named Andrei Kajalowski. Make him sag. And walks away. From that day, everybody started calling me Mr. That's all I know. Mr. Trejo, would you like some coffee? Yeah. Two cups. Cream and sugar. And some Pilates. Some little biscuits. Get some of those. Anything. Dude, I could say, it was so weird. I could say stuff like, uh, do we have any like, uh, Apple, cranberry, something come like that. <laughs> that was cool. I was joking, you know. <laughs> since that day, since that day, I've done over 123 movies. Since that day, I've, I've worked. i worked with some of the biggest actors there is. And the amazing part is that they want to work with me again, see, because of the stuff I learned in Alcoholics Anonymous. What does Alcoholics Anonymous show us? How to be courteous, kind, sharing, caring. And that's what it shows us. Okay, it's got to teach me how to be a better person. That's what it does. See, I got to do stuff for other people and not expect any kind of reward. Huh? And it's so funny because people always ask me, Danny, well, there's a lot of drugs. Well, you know, does that bother you? Oh, sure, because I want to die, go insane, go to jail, you idiot. Yeah. Are you kidding them? Some of them big actors, I love to catch them, like coming out of the bathroom going, oh, God, I love this. Oh, God. Hey, did you do good? Come on, man. Come on. How come they can't beat me up? I don't shit. You kidding? And then just follow them. No, who no, is it? Is it okay? Well, all right. <laughs> This program will work in spite of us. Do you understand? This program won't only save our lives. It'll save our kids' lives. It'll save our families' lives. My son, my son was running around going crazy. Do you understand? He was just doing, you know, every drug known to mankind. And his sister was following him. He was like 15. I guess she was like 14. And like, you know, I'm dying. I'm talking to 500 kids at a time in schools. And mine are dying. I'm dying. dying. Do you understand? And uh, I remember I'm trying to get Gilbert, let's go to meetings, let's go to meetings. Nah, he said, you know, he's like, like 40 pounds or something. I don't know. He's like, yeah, I mean, one of those, he looked like Jack from The Nightmare Before Christmas. You know, you, you know. And I'm, God, what am I do? And it's amazing because, because uh, I, uh, I got mad at him one day. I got mad at him. Grabbed him, you know. I was, and, and you know what? I heard my dad. Then I heard my grandfather. You know what I mean? I heard them coming out of me, and and I knew that didn't work. You know what I mean? Because right after that, I was in the penitentiary. So, so I was like, like I let him go, and I walked away. I said, Gilbert, I love you, man. I said, okay, I'm all. And I'm talking to these kids, and I'm, and I walked off the stage. I couldn't talk, and my friend. Cheese Puss, who's in the program, found Christ and ex-Mexican mafia. And he said, what are you doing, Holmes? I said, oh, I can't do it, Holmes. I said, you know, they might find my son in, behind the 7-Eleven dumpster right now, man. And, and, and I'm sitting here trying to act like I know how to help kids. He says, hey, oh, now we're playing God, huh? He says, all you got to do is God's work, man, and leave his work to him. You know, it's like, it's, it's what you're supposed to be doing. I finished talking and then I went to a meeting. I went to a meeting and and uh, I sat there and he called on me and I just said something and then sat down and this, this kid comes up to me. Right afterwards, this kid comes up to me. And this kid 
had like four earrings in each ear, had his eye pierced, had his nose pierced, had a piercing right here with a little knife hanging down, had his tongue pierced, had both chichis pierced. And he says, hey, will you be my sponsor? And my thought was, I'll turn this little sucker into a Republican. I swear, no, I could just see this kid like in a, in like a, a suit tie. Yeah, I'll be your sponsor. I started taking this kid, Johnny, to meetings, taking Johnny to meetings. And every day I'm asking my kid, come on, Gilbert. Going, nah, nah. Oh, you guys be to the joy. They always make fun of us. And uh, one day me and Johnny stopped at the house because I think we we're coming up to Santa Barbara to talk at a court. And Gilbert was probably just getting up about three o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, and him and I go shower, him and Johnny start talking. Gilbert comes up and says, Dad, can I go to a meeting with Johnny? I says, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he got a cool truck. He had a big truck, too damn high, this high. And, and all of a sudden, he's going to meetings. Went to a school called Provo Canyon, Utah. He's getting ready to graduate. Got a job, an apartment. Started a band. They're playing in Riverside right now. And so I'm blessed. Do you understand? My daughter's going on 60 days here pretty soon. So I'm blessed to understand. And uh, the rest of my life is a mess, but I'm blessed to understand. I got healthy kids. I got a career that, you know, I, you know, I'm, come on, I was on Desperate Housewives. You know what the hell is? Okay. So, and I honestly believe if you're a newcomer, please, if you're a newcomer, take the words, take, take these two words out of your vocabulary, okay? I know. Take those out of your vocabulary. Okay. Just take them out of your vocabulary. No, no, I know. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I know that. You know? Please, just don't use the words I know. For nothing, see? And if we can do that, then all of a sudden, we're listening. Because you got to remember this disease. This disease is I know friendly. See? The minute somebody starts talking you, talking to you, this disease pushes the I know button. See? Immediately. If somebody comes up, hey, do you know me? I know. See? You hear nothing. So you take the words I know out. That's all. And uh, life keeps getting better and better and better and better. Do you understand? And I'm telling you, this journey, I have been all over the world. I've been in meetings all over the world. Do you understand? I'm still a drug counselor. I still work with newcomers. I still hang out in meetings when I can, but I just hang out in Paris. <laughs> London, listen to people talk funny. <laughs> Mexico. Last week I was in London, Albuquerque, and Phoenix. And um, I was thinking, like, wow, this is a hell of a trip. I'm going back to London in July. I think I'm taking my daughter and, and my uh, son with me. And my other boy, my other son lives in Lompoc. He's doing really good. And so, so if you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. If you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. If you're new, I suggest you go to a lot of meetings. And I'm not trying to be funny because actually in the language of the newcomer, when you say that, their mind is geared to hear, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot. All the newcomers right now, I, I know who you are because you were all saying, what do you say? What do you, what do you say? See? So if you're new, go to a lot of meetings. And it tells, it promises us good things will come to pass. So we can have this life. Remember what I said, the guarantee, the, 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 the fortune teller. 
I'll tell you right now, die, go insane, or go to jail. If you stay here, if you stay here, nobody can tell your fortune. All they can say is that your life will get better and better and better. See? And you got to do those things they say. You got to do those little things they say. Big deal. Got to sit down right. Yeah. Big deal. Share. That's it. Help me remove the character defects. It's okay. See? You know. Be of service. The thing that I love about alcoholics and others, no matter how smart somebody gets, all you can strive to be is chief servant. That's it. I'm the best servant AA's got. That's it. That's all. See? Because we're all here. And I kept thinking that this program, I couldn't understand. See? See? This, this program is God sent. Do you understand? This program saves our entire family. This program is a new lease on life. This program is everything we have ever wanted. Everything. See, every, there's nothing. There's nothing. Sky is the limit. See, all I got to do is stay clean, stay sober. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. Okay. It's like he's giving you the exercise.